I will be doing our scripture reading this today in three parts, because there are three parts to this psalm. We begin in the psalm, as we might, given how wonderful this glorious spring weather feels after such great cold this winter. We begin in this psalm with the glory of God revealed in the sun and the world that surround us. This is Psalm 19, verse 1 through 6. Listen for God's word. The heavens are telling the glory of God. The firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man the sun runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, its circuit is to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. This is the beginning of our scripture reading today. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, not through words. They don't tell through words, but still they pour forth speech. Not through any particular voice from the heavens, but yet we still sense the glory of God in the world. The writer and pastor Frederick Beekner says that God speaks into or out of the thick of our days. That God speaks like a music rising up out of the mystery of not just our own lives, but of life itself. This is the kind of speech we hear from God. These are the words we receive through the world itself. So we hear God's speech, says the psalm, says Frederick Buechner, through things like the sun's brilliance, or the quiet drip, drip, drip of the melting snow, or through the softness of the now uncovered soil and grass. Through all of these, the word of God comes through, and the promises of God get remembered. The creation's nurture of us, the way that God cares for us through the world itself, all of that becomes clear. This creative energy of God, this wonderful creation, becomes a reminder to us to seek God out. We see the sun, marvel at its wonderful warmth this time of year, and our thoughts can turn to God, our creator. Here in this time of Lent, the creation becomes part of that nudge for us toward God, the reminder that there is a God, the reminder that there is a God who cares for us, The reminder is that we can turn to God in all our wonderings and our wanderings. So then, this is where the psalm begins, reminding us through the creation of our creator. And as the world turns around us, it reminds us to turn our eyes to God. As we are reminded to turn our eyes to God, the psalm continues with the question, by answering, by sort of answering the question, what can we then learn about who God is and what God teaches? Listen now for verses 7 through 10 of Psalm 19. The psalm reminds us this. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than fine gold, even much gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. This section of the psalm, these were words to inspire learning, teaching, instruction. These are reminders that studying the word of the Lord, studying scripture itself, remembering the law of God, that all of that can bring about 
as it says, a revival of the soul. It can bring about wisdom, enlightenment of the eye. It can bring about rejoicing. We see this in the laws of Scripture. Another reading offered in today's lectionary is of the Ten Commandments. And that Ten Commandments and the Scripture and the Word and the Law, all of these in Hebrew share a name, the Torah. And the Torah, this Hebrew word Torah, it means law. It also means word. It means scripture. It's the name given to the first, to the five books of the Bible. And so this is all wrapped up in one, that the word of God, the scripture, the law is all expressed in this way. And we can turn to that and seek out wisdom, enlightenment, rejoicing, sweetness. And we see that sense of the law and of the word embodied still further in our Christian understanding. We see this embodied literally in the form of Jesus Christ, the one whom the Gospel of John calls the word made flesh. This is God as our redeemer. This is God as our word that speaks to us, calls us to follow, calls us to learn, and brings about new life and new understanding. So, so far this psalm has brought us from the glory of the creation, recognizing the magnificence of the creator, to then seeking to learn, to follow, to live according to how God would have us live. This progression leads us on that path of discipleship, of remembering the covenant God places within us, of living according to God's word, and responding to God's call in our lives to be disciples. We follow that same pattern in Lent in a way. We go from Ash Wednesday reminded of our finite nature, that we are dust, and then turning to the call of discipleship in our lives. We turn from the creator to recognizing where we find our redeemer in following Christ. So then the psalm continues. The psalm ends with a prayer. This is verses 11 through 14. And note that this is a prayer to God rather than words about God or about the law. We've shifted our focus from kind of teaching to praying. Listen for verses 11 through 14. Moreover, by the law is your servant warned, In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? O Lord, clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Then let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. This is the end of the psalm, and we feel this psalm in its wholeness, in its unity, a flow. A flow from awe at the creation to returning to the law to follow God more closely and now turning to God in prayer, seeking out help to follow that law, to, to share that appreciation. The psalm shifts its focus here at the end from telling about God to praying to God in this close and familiar language. O Lord, we are your servants. O Lord, uh, clear me from hidden faults. It's this closeness with God. God, you focus on us as individuals. God, you are our rock and you are our redeemer. And such a prayer, such a prayer leans on the sustaining nature of God, that God is present with us, close with us, sustaining us, not just as our creator revealed in the majesties of creation, not just as our teacher, not just as our word, our law showing us how to live, but also as God is present with us as our comforter, as our advocate, enabling our prayers, familiar to us, close to us, giving us the day-by-day sustenance that we need. So, amazed at the creation, 
on the path to discipleship, we realize that we cannot do it alone, but rely fully on God's help and sustenance in our lives. We pray for God's help here at the end of the psalm, that our words, even our heartfelt meditations, our feelings, our thoughts, that all of these might be acceptable to God and that we might follow on the path laid out for us in the word. It's this sustaining, close aspect of God that inspires us to pray as well. It's a God that sustains us in our daily living, God that is our advocate, our helper, our comforter. It's this aspect of God that we refer to as the Holy Spirit, God in our lives inspiring us. And so in all of these, in the whole of this psalm, we see examples of how we turn to God in faith. We are inspired by the creation and moved to discipleship. We are inspired to prayer returning to God. This is a cycle that repeats itself again and again in our lives as we move through our days. And it is a cycle heightened for us here in Lent as we consider the covenants with God, as we consider the discipleship that Christ calls us to, the prayer, the spiritual practices that sustain us as we seek to return to God as we seek to repent and live in a state of repentance and reorienting ourselves to God, our prayerful response to God. So in this Lent, let us be guided by the psalm. Let us turn to the creation in wonder. The sun shines with the glory of God. Let us be reminded of the word that guides our path. It's sweeter than honey. Let us be reminded to return to God in prayer. As we pray that the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable to our God, who is our rock and our redeemer. Thanks be to God. Amen.